All right, guys, so before we can move on to permutations, combinations, and probability, we just need to do a quick recap of factorials. So factorial is always represented by an exclamation mark. So when you see something like 3 factorial here, all that means is you're multiplying the number in front of the exclamation point, 3, by the numbers behind it on a number line. So here it would be 3, 2, and 1 and you always count down to 1. So if it were something like 5 factorial, what you would be doing is multiplying 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. 0 factorial will always equal 1. Moving on to permutations and combinations. With permutations, order matters. So for instance here we have a question asking us how many permutations of the numbers 1, 2, and 3 exist. And here are the six different ways. So 1, 2, 3 and 1, 3, 2 are not considered the same thing. They're considered unique answers or unique permutations. With combinations, order doesn't matter. So if I were to ask how many combinations of 1, 2, 3 exist, there's only one, 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3 would be the same as saying 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, and so on and so forth. So the shorthand notation for these are NPR and NCR. So you would read these as out of N items, I'd want R permutations, or out of N, I would take R combinations. So if I had five letters and wanted to know the number of permutations taking only two letters, it would be 5P2. So there's some formulas you can use to calculate permutations and combinations. These are things you're going to have to memorize. For permutations, using the NPR notation, you'd have n factorial over n minus r factorial. The difference for combinations, NCR, would be n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. This is all in the denominator, by the way. All right, so some questions about permutations and combinations. There are 10 people competing for gold, silver, and bronze medals, so we're looking for the top three finishers. How many different possible outcomes exist for the top three? So in this case, the order of the finishers matters. So it's a permutation question, which means we have 10p3. The formula for this is n factorial over n minus r factorial. So n here is 10 factorial over n minus r factorial, 10 minus 3. So if we write this out, we get this over 7 factorial. So an easy way to do this before we move forward and multiply everything out is to just reduce so we have 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 up here. That cancels out with everything underneath, which leaves us with 10 times 9 times 8. 10 times 9 is 90 times 8 is 720. So we have 720 different possible outcomes for the top three. So next up we have seven people trying to get on a bus, and there's only enough room for three people how many possible outcomes exist. So in this case, the order of the people getting on the bus doesn't matter, just matters that a group of three get on. So this would be a combination problem, 7C3. Now the formula for combinations is n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. We know n is 7, so we get 7 factorial over n minus r, which is 7 minus 3, and r is 3. So we get 7 factorial over 4 factorial times 3 factorial. And like in the last question, we can cancel out some numbers. So we know that 7 factorial is just 7 times 6 times 5 all the way down to 1. We know 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So what we can do is take 4 factorial and cancel that out. That leaves us with 7 times 6 times 5 on top. 3 factorial in bottom, which is 3 times 2 times 1. 
So 7 times 6 times 5 is 6 times 5 is 30, times 7 is 210. 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, so we get 210 over 6. 210 divided by 6, 3 and 6 gives us 18. 30, 6 goes into 35 times, and we're left with 35 possible outcomes. So moving on to probability. When you have a probability question, you're looking for the chances that a specific outcome will occur. So for instance, when you roll a six-sided die, the odds that you roll a one is one out of six. So the odds that the specific thing happens will always go over all the possible outcomes. You're looking for one, there's only one one on a die, and there's six possibilities, so one over six. If I were to ask you the odds of rolling one twice, you would take that one over six and multiply it by one over six. The chances you roll one, the chances you roll one. When you add every possible outcome together, you'll always get a total of one. So the odds of rolling a, a one is one out of six, and the odds of rolling not a one are five out of six. So one sixth plus five sixth gets you one. When you have odds of zero, it just means that it'll never happen. All right, so some probability questions. There are two oranges, three apples, and five bananas in a bag. What's the probability you grab an apple out of the bag? So we know we have a total of two, three, which is five, plus five, ten pieces of fruit in a bag. You want to know the probability of grabbing an apple. There are three apples, so the chances are three over ten. All right, so moving on. What are the odds you draw two consecutive aces out of a deck of cards? Now before we answer this question, there's certain facts about decks of cards that you're going to need to know for the SAT and possibly the ACT. A deck of cards consists of 52 cards with no jokers, and you have four of each card. The cards are numbered from 2 to 10, and then you have the face cards of a jack, queen, king, and ace. So you have four of each of these, and four of each of these up here. So we know a full deck of cards consists of 52 cards. The odds of picking one ace would be four out of 52, since there are four aces in the deck. Now after we pick that ace out, we're trying to pick another ace, which means we're left with three aces in the deck, out of 51 cards remaining. All we need to do to figure out the odds of drawing two consecutive aces out of a deck is to multiply these two numbers together. So 4 over 52 times 3 over 51 will get you those odds. That simplifies to 1 over 13 times 1 over 17, which gets us 1 over 221. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this episode. Here's some questions going over probability, permutations, and combinations. Like always, I'll be following up with another video going over how to answer these questions in the near future. Feel free to leave questions and comments below. And like always, if you found it helpful, give the video a like and subscribe.